that all the earth keeps silence before them. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. I will sing of glory and of justice to you, O Lord, I will sing. We'll let the, uh, the choir continue with your song, and then we'll have uh, the motion by Emma. Heavenly Father, again, once more, Lord, meeting one more time, Lord, in your name. Heavenly Father, I come as a common thanksgiving in our hearts. Heavenly Father, thanking you for all your many blessings that you have stored upon us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your mercy this morning. Lord, we got here, Lord, not on our own, but Lord, you got here for your grace and your mercy. You woke us up this morning in our right mind. Then, Lord, you made us. You able us to come here, Lord, at one from one accord. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for that. We yeah. thank you for all for this congregation, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we know that it wasn't a, just our doing, Lord. But you guide us up and down the James Highway. Yeah. We made it here safe. Thank we thank you, Lord, for it. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this congregation, Lord. Yeah. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bless this congregation, hold them in your hand. In heaven, Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless the sick. Yeah. Bless the Shut in, Lord, yes. all over the land and country, Lord. Yes, Somebody that night laid down, Lord, they get in pain, Lord. Yes. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord, just for a doctor this morning. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for just checking our body this morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Heavenly Father, we, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for just leading God in the right direction. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Yes. Heavenly Father, Lord, we yes, thank you for your peace word this morning, Lord. Yes. Bless the man who's going to provide the word. Heavenly Father, give him what he need, Lord, to yes. deliver your word. Yes. And Heavenly Father, bless all the ministers of the gospel yes. tonight. Yes. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, that Lord, you just lead and guide us, Lord. Yes. We all here, Lord, no, no big eyes and, and, and little views, Lord. Yes. But Lord, we're here, Lord, because we're here, Lord, just up to your name. Yes. We're not here for no, for no, no fame or fortune this morning, but Lord, we're here, Lord, to just a closer walk with me. Yeah. And the Father, we hear the Lord that just said, Don't take your joy from us, Lord. Yeah. The Lord, after everything is done, Lord, we just going to say, Hallelujah. In the, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah in the hammer. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for your blessing. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. This is what we're going to do today.
He loves us with unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord God, the of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen.
in uh, this comeback from um, Refugee Church since the COVID, did you like to stay or welcome? Or uh, it was just something you recognize? Um, we definitely have a lot of people that was back. Uh, Amen. 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 Amen.
So it's a blessing. Amen. And I tried to see. Uh, these are reading glasses, by the way. And I could, I used to could see the congregation by putting them on. Now I put them on. I can't see who you are. But I thank God. So God is good. I recognize Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, and to the Holy Spirit, the believers, God. The Reverend Strawberries, thank you for preaching a wonderful Mother's Day message, a powerful message. I thank God for our worship leader. Thank God for the people of God in this house. Amen. And I will ask you, thank you for being our liturgist, the worship leader. Thank God for all of you. To my wife, I thank God for her. Amen. And let's give this brotherhood another round of applause. Amen. 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 There's a word that God has given me. And uh, I didn't know that I would be standing this morning, but the Holy Spirit said stand. Amen. So I call your attention to the second chapter of Acts. In the first four verses, we'll find these words. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled. Why don't you say all? Oh. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to tag this message this morning. I want to preach from the subject we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. I will place a little bit more emphasis on that. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is that promise that God gave and made. And Jesus talked about that promise. The Holy Spirit is oftentimes overlooked, seldom mentioned, and we hardly ever speak to the Holy Spirit on a daily uh, walk. We hardly ever pray to the Holy Spirit. We hardly ever ask the Holy Spirit. We hardly ever lean and depend on the Holy Spirit. And we can hardly see our way all times in life. Because we're trying to navigate through life by our own intellect, by our own understanding, our own experiences. When the Word of God declares in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. We very seldom call on the Holy Spirit. We call on Jesus, which is a powerful name. And I like the way the brotherhood called on him this morning. Oh, Joe called on him, didn't he? Amen. The brotherhood called on him, didn't he? Yeah. And I love the name of Jesus. I love to call on that name. And he says to call on him. He says, if you call me, I'll come. I'll hear you. I'll help you. But then Jesus said, I'm going to give you some more help some holy help. And he's not going to ever leave you. He's going to abide and tabernacle within you. He'll be there daily. He'll be there when you need him. He'll be there when you're frustrated. He'll be there when you're distressed, when you're in despair, when you don't know what to do, don't know who to turn to. You can call on him. But very rarely do we call on the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit. The young people say, for real, we need the Holy Spirit. Yes, I hope uh, today springs from a promise that Jesus made at a time when the closest followers of his, yes, uh, uh, were about to give up hope. And he said, according to John 14 and 18, 
I will come to you. I will not leave you as offerings. I will come to you. And after Jesus spoke these words, not too many days uh, from then, he returned to his Father in heaven. I believe, brothers and sisters, in 2022, that many believers in Christ do the best that we can. Jesus promised that this would not be the case. We do the best that we can. But if Christian life has become simply a matter of doing our best, then there was no need for God to send the Holy Spirit to help us. After all, our best is our best. Yes, how do we improve on that? Since God is omniscient, as we certainly believe that he is, God knows when we have done all we can do. Jesus let it be known, however, that God was looking for more than that. He was looking for more than that. He was looking for more than our best. He was and still is looking for a lifestyle and attitude that supersede our best. Jesus even wants a lifestyle and attitude that we can never attain through our own efforts. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is for your own benefit that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper shall not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. Let's think about it. If we don't need any help, why send the helper? The promise Jesus made of a helper presupposes that we need help. Amen. The promise of a helper was Jesus' way of tipping his disciples off to one of the most deep truths concerning the Christian life. It is impossible to live the Christian life well pleasing to God without the help of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. It is impossible to live the Christian life well pleasing to God. You do want to please God, don't you? Yes. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6, I believe, that it's impossible to please him without faith. But to have faith, we must be guided by the Holy Spirit. We must be guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. The quality of life Jesus expects from his disciples or followers is not possible without the help from the Holy Spirit. Yes. I have, uh, we, we need his help. I have, I have met people who said, uh, I've, I've tried my best to live the Christian life, but it's just too hard. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. That's what he said. And my burden is light. Uh, the Christian life is not a problem. More than likely the problem is, Trying to live the Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. Now you don't have to raise your hands. You don't have to say anything. But how many of you try to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit? No, you don't have to raise your hand. Uh, how many of you talk to God weekly without even mentioning the Holy Spirit? How many of you try to make this journey of faith? Daily, without even the Holy Spirit's assistance in your life. How many times of the month have you failed to even mention the Holy Spirit? And no wonder sometimes we stumble along the way. We're going to do that anyway. But it's more than probably that we do a lot of stumbling without leaning and depending on the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And when I say Christian life, I'm not just talking about in the church building. When I say the Christian life, it encumbers every aspect of living. The family life, the personal life, the private life, the life in the community, the life of uh, getting along with neighbors and uh, others and those who are the meanest people in the world. If you have the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he'll show you how to live 
among others. How to live with us. And that's why the songwriter said, God, me on thou great Jehovah. Heal them in this barren land. I'm weak, but thou art mighty. Guide me with your powerful hands. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. We need the Holy Spirit. You couldn't pray like Ella Thomas prayed this morning without the Holy Spirit. See, he, he got out of the element of himself. And the Holy Spirit moved in him. Moved in the room with him. Moved in this sanctuary with him. And we could all feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just Ella Little Thomas. That was the Holy Spirit being using Ella Thomas. Using him in a powerful way. Amen. You got to lean on the Holy Spirit. Joe could have sung like that without the Holy Spirit. Because you see, the more he called on Jesus and talked about what Jesus is to him, it got stronger and stronger. He moved beyond his talent, moved in the spirit. When you move in the spirit realm, it makes the difference. The Holy Spirit always going to make the difference. Do you know when you're in the spirit? You know when you're leaning on yourself? And you know when you're leaning on God? When you're leaning on God, He'll make things all right for you. When you're leaning on the Holy Spirit, He'll make you do things that you didn't think you would do. You'll cry for nothing bothers you. You'll laugh for nothing's funny. It's just the joy that you have. This joy that we have. The world didn't give it to us. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. He give you joy in the morning. You might have your sorrow uh, going on in your life. You might have sadness. But it's something about Jesus. He'll give you joy in the morning. That's why he said, morning by morning, new mercy. See, God knows what we need. He'll give us new and fresh mercy. That's what Jeremiah said. Morning by morning, God give us fresh mercy. He don't give us no stale mercy. Oh, stale mercy is good if God give it to you. But God don't give us stale mercy. He give us fresh mercy, new mercy, new mercy we see. Amen. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Yes. But, but you know, we, if we just put our trust in the Lord, without the help of the Holy Spirit, we can't make it. Now, if that ever was a group of people, of followers of Christ, who should have been able to live con a, a consistent Christian life, well-pleasing to God, just by doing their best, it would have been the apostles of Jesus Christ. Just think about all the advantages that, that they had. Yes, they had walked with Jesus. Three years, they had talked with him. They had been taught by him. They had witnessed his miracles. Jesus had given them spiritual power. They had performed miracles themselves. Peter even walked on water at Jesus' invitation. Nobody could have been more motivated and determined than them. Yet in their last encounter with the risen Savior, he let them know they were still lacking something. I wonder, are you lacking anything this morning? I wonder, are you lacking anything? We say we're going to suffer with Christ. But at the first sign of suffering in our life, our attitude changes. But we ought to rejoice. Jesus said rejoice and be exceedingly glad. But so did they persecute me. So was I, did I have to undergo suffering? If we suffer with him, we'll also reign with him. Amen. So we must be able to rejoice when God allows us. I heard someone ask, I think it was Elder Marsha reader said, uh, the songwriter said, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? And the answer was, no, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for me. The songwriter going to say, I bear the, conse the consecrated cross I bear to death shall set me free. Then go home my cross to wear, my crown to wear. For there's a crown for me. Yes, we, we have to have a personal daily walk with the Holy Spirit. They had witnessed everything that Jesus had done. And they should have been persuaded. They should have been, they should have been convinced, but Jesus told them that they were lacking something. 
He told them uh, that they were to wait in Jerusalem. Yes, for the promise of the Father. He told them, John baptized you with water. But not many days from now, you shall be baptized by the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will receive spiritual authority. You will be my witnesses. Yes, in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and even the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, we all have received the Holy Spirit and been baptized, amen? We received the Holy Spirit. But I said we are not on good speaking terms with the Holy Spirit. He's on good speaking terms with us. But we're not on good speaking terms with Him. Because we very rarely speak to Him. We, we very rarely ask Him to help us. Amen. That's not a judgment. That's just the truth being spoken out loud. Amen. Because most of us hardly call on the Holy Spirit. We sing about Him, but we don't talk to Him. Amen. But we must start talking to the Holy Spirit. Because He's not just to lie within us dormant. Amen. But He won't force Himself on us. He's there to help us, to guide us. He's there to warn us. He's there to encourage us. He's there to exhort us. He's there to let us know the time is urgent. We must act now while we have time because Jesus is coming back after a while. He's coming back for a church without what? Spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. Yes, we must be the people that God is calling on. You know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Well, if people who were chosen by Jesus more than 2,000 years ago, if they needed the Holy Spirit, then what about Christians in 2022? If those followers of Christ more than 2,000 years ago dare not make a move for Christ until they were assured of his presence and power, how unwise and ill-advised is it for us uh, every morning to go out and charge out without asking the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us along the way. Without the Holy Spirit, our lives will be characterized by defeat and not victory, sorrow rather than joy, frustration rather than peace. Apart from the Holy Spirit, life is reduced to doing the best we can. I don't know about you, but for me, that's just not very good. God has called his people that are called by his name to go be above, above and beyond mediocrity. We ought not just be satisfied with just anything. Anything. We ought to want beauty for God. I looked at uh, a mother breeze, I believe, placing those beautiful flowers. I didn't overlook them. I see them. Amen. But see, I didn't know who would do it. But God is going to always have somebody to know that the house of God ought to be beautified. It ought not just be accepted that it's just a house. You want the best for your house. You ought to want the best for God's house. The Holy Spirit would tell us if we talk to Him, God deserves the best. We ought to worship God in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Yes, we all want the best for God. We all go out our way to want to do a little bit more for God. Amen. Because he did everything for us. He, he, he did everything. He gave us his best. He didn't give us what he didn't want. He gave us what he loved the most. Amen. Good God, man. I've got to stop and get out of here now. Yes, I get too happy. Yes, what happened? I wonder what happened to the fires of enthusiasm which once burned so brightly in the life of the church. What happened to the people of our church, not Union Hill, but I'm talking about the Christian church, who were once willing to risk everything for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There was a time when Christians eagerly gathered for worship every day of the week. But today, our churches stand empty six days of the week. And we think we are doing good if we can get 50% of our members together for worship on one day of the week. Yes, there was a time when Christians were willing to face persecution 
and even death in order to proclaim the gospel of the risen Christ. But now it's hard for us to get up enough nerves to invite our neighbor next door to come to church with us. Throughout the centuries, the Christian church has been largely responsible for nearly every step of social progress that has ever been made. But today, in a time of social injustice, prejudice, racial hatred, ignorance, most of the people of the church do not even seem to care. Now, it isn't that we have set up ourselves against God and His will for us. We haven't deliberately gone out of the way to prevent the advance of Christ's kingdom. It's just that we become comfortable and lazy. After so many years of being on the receiving end of God's new mercy, His fresh mercy every day, the church has grown fat and complacent. And most of us are pretty well satisfied with the way things are in the church. Because this sort of policy seems to offer us the maximum amount of spiritual security with the minimum amount of effort. God Almighty. We need the Holy Spirit. I said we need the Holy Spirit. We, I, I heard uh, 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 about a few weeks ago, I think it might have been a couple of weeks ago, uh, Elder Drake leading a song said, Holy Spirit, don't you leave me. Holy Spirit, the old saints used to sing that a long time ago, but we don't, it don't come up too much no more. We don't sing like that no more. We don't sing songs like that too, too many times anymore. It, we don't just get that. And, and he told me later that he don't know what happened to him that day. The Holy Spirit just hit him. That's what he told me. He said the Holy Spirit just touched me and I couldn't help it. He's in the balcony. And he took his mask off. And you know how you keep that mask on. Yeah. But he took that mask off and, and he stood up and he started saying, Holy Spirit, don't you leave me. Don't you leave me in the hand of the wicked one. And that's what they used to say in the old church. Amen. They used to be on fire for God. And, and now we, we, we're not trying to build fire for God any longer. We're trying to get out of the house. Amen. Amen. We worry about getting out of the house and how we're going to get out before the fire start. Amen. But if we just let go and let God, let the Holy Spirit guide us, He'll keep us safe. Amen. That's His job to lead and guide us. That's His job to keep us safe and saved. That's the Holy Spirit's job. But, but you see, we, we start forgetting that. There are people who are longing for the Holy Spirit. And some of those old saints are at home and gone home and they can't get back here. We need to drag them back in here just for a day or so. Amen. So the fire can get going again. Amen. It was going this morning. Amen. But we need to get some of those old saints back in here. They didn't get all the education that we got. But it seems like the more we got, the less we want to praise God. Amen. The more we get, amen. The more material blessings he blesses us with. We just want to lay back and take it easy and find But God wants us out of it. I know I'm not going to get no amens on this. I know I'm not popular for this. But God told me to say it. And my oldest member of this church, Mother Amber Jones, she said, when God tell you to say it, you better say it. Amen. And she's 99 years old. And she still talks like that. She said, when God tells you to tell his people, you better tell them what God says. Don't worry about what they think about it. You just tell them what God says and let God handle that. Amen. And, I, and I'm not saying that I had a conversation with her about that. She had a conversation with me about that. I don't even know where it came from, but that's what she said. She wanted me to know something. She said, I need to pass this on to you. And so what she's doing, she's passing the torch on. And because I got to pass it on, and so you got to pass it on. But we have to make sure that our the torch is lit. Amen. It's time for us to catch on fire. If we're not going to catch on fire for God, when are we going to catch on fire for God? If we're not going to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us, when do we plan to let the Holy Spirit guide us? But we, if we do, we got far more time behind us than we got ahead of us on this side. On this side of the dirt. Amen. 
I've seen young people lean. I've seen young people in their grave. I've seen them recently, and I've still seen it. So we got to understand, we need God. Amen. We need God to lead us. We need God to guide us. We need Him because He has paid the price for us. He has redeemed us. He has sent His Son to give His life for us. And you know, we, we need to stop being concerned so much about others. But we need to be concerned about God and what God thinks about us. We need God. We need God every minute. We need God every day. We can't make it without God. And we need the Holy Spirit to come down from above. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need your love. We need the burden of the Holy Spirit. We need the all of the Holy Spirit. We can't make it without the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need God. We can't make it without Him. Yes, I know. I know I got to go. I got to get out of here. But I stop by to tell you, we need the Holy Spirit. God, God just want me to tell you. And tell myself, uh, we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you didn't talk to Him this morning, uh, you need the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you didn't talk to Him last week, uh, you need the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you didn't talk to Him uh, when you lay down at night, uh, if you didn't thank the Holy Spirit uh, for abiding in you, uh, He's still in you like He's still in me. We need the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, Jesus, uh, you, you gave us your word. Uh, you said, I'm not going to leave you. Uh, I'm not going to leave you like offerings. Uh, I'm not going to leave you. Uh, I'm not going to abandon you. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to send you uh, my comforter. Uh, and he, he, uh, he'll lead you uh, and guide you uh, in all ways uh, of truth. Uh, I stop by the if you feel sad, talk to the Holy Spirit. He'll give you joy, joy in the morning. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, every now and then, He reminds me. Yeah, when you feel like your life is uphill, He reminds me. Just look to place called Calvary. If you feel like you have a bad Friday, he remind me of a Friday that took place more than 2,000 years ago. A man named Jesus came down. He was rich, but he came poor. And you and I might become rich. Do you know him? Do you know him?
believe your heart is Jesus, Jesus, I need you. And he'll come in your life. He'll come in your heart. He'll come in your mind. He'll take over your being. He'll lead you and guide you by the power of his Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need not only just at the church building. We need it everywhere we go in our life. If I fall, it's on me. It's not on the Holy Spirit. Because he's got to guide me. But we got to talk to the Holy Spirit. Like old people used to talk to do it. Now we can't say the old people no more, can we? We love old people. Amen. Some of us, not the young children. Amen. But if you're not going to know that you need the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, Jesus is on his way back. I'm trying to tell you that. If you don't hear me say it no more, very soon, Jesus is coming back. I don't know who this is going to be, but he's on his way back. And you got to be prepared. You got you to be able to ask the Lord, Lord, I want you to use me in your service. I want you to guide me every day. We need your word. We got to have your word. We need you. But when you get his word, you got to do something with it. I got to do something with it. Because it's here for you. If you don't do nothing with it, that's on you. But I give you God's word. I give you his word. And it's up to you what you do with it. But you have his word. Somebody said, I need you something to take you through the next week. No, you need something to take you through the rest of your life. Not just next week. Next week might not even get here. This might be the beginning of the end for you and me. We don't know that. So we got to ask God, Lord, give me joy when I'm in sorrow. Give me joy when I'm down in the valley. Bring me on up to the top of the mountain. Oh my God. He'll do that for you. But you got to know you need the Holy Spirit. I can't say that enough. You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. I saw Sister Sister Matthews. Sister Drake. Sister Mother Drake. Mother Drake. That was you, Matthews, too. One night, we were at a mother's march. I didn't know the Holy Spirit would do her like he did. She was just serving and getting water and stuff. And next thing I know, I saw her taking off down that aisle. The Holy Spirit got to her. I'm not saying you're going to take off. You might just sit right in place. But the Holy Spirit will move in you. He'll move in you and he'll move in your mind. And then that mean spirit, he'll take that away. Because he'll tell you, he'll guide you in all the way to truth. He'll say, no, no, that's not the way. That's not the way. That's not the way to be the life of Christ. That's not the way. It's not what others do. It's what you do. It's not how people do you. It's how you respond to it. you got to be a light. You are the light. Let your light so shine before me that they'll see your good works. And glorify your Father in heaven. When you go through sickness and go through suffering, you can still be a life for others. Because they still see you coming. But I still see persons, and I'm just saying, like Sister Lyon, Sister Lyon, still coming. Sister Renee, still coming. Knowing what she's going through, and she still comes. And she has a, a, an ability to sit and listen. But when you hear her articulate God's word, even when the smallest child understands what she's saying. Because she's learned to listen. She's learned to do that. And then she's not just doing that. When you hear her talk about Jesus, the girl's on fire. She, she has a fire that gets up out of her. All these mothers, I mean, I'm not going to call them names, but I'm just saying, they're doing things. And sometimes you'll see when God has put a fire on you, you'll do it and nobody else do it. Because it's in you. The Holy Spirit. So I said enough. It's 11 o'clock. So it's time to go.
Holy Spirit is timely. <laughs> He's timely. I, I, I think I've gone a long time. I've preached the word already. But we will hear from the brotherhood before we give you the invitation. We want, we want you to hear them sing, a minister to us. Not just sing. They're not here to entertain you. They're here to minister to us. Not just to you. They're not entertaining you. They're ministering to you. So, Brotherhood, y'all say what you're going to say, and then I'll do the invitation after you finish. I will wait on you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Whatever they want to say.
time we will extend to you an invitation to Christian discipleship uh, to become a follower of Jesus Christ in 2022 if you don't know him. And if you do know him, and if you can honestly say, and I can honestly say, that we have not literally been on speaking terms with the Holy Spirit as we are. We're planning to do better with God's help. It's not a lot of words. It's just simple acknowledging. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, what should I do? Holy Spirit, which way do I go? It's just a simple acknowledging each day. And then at the end of the day, before you lie down, or as you lie down, you're thanking Him. Thank you for bringing me through another day's journey. Thank you for that. Thank you for tolerating me. You inside me. You, you're stealing me. You're keeping me. And I just want to thank you for that. You love me. Even though I grieve you. Even though I quench you. I hold back my praise to you. But if you just acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Like Mother Cora does. To see her sitting here after what she's gone through physically. To want to be here. To want to be here. That's a testimony in itself. The desire just to be in his house. You may be seen. If there's anyone that don't know Jesus and the free pardon of your sins, to the utmost, Jesus saves. He'll save you. And if you just need him to do something for your life, he's always doing something for us. But he said we can cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. May God bless you. May you have a wonderful week in the Lord, a wonderful day ahead. And always know, be kind to somebody because it might be the last opportunity you have. Make each day count, because it might be the last time. So, at this time, Reverend Strawbridge will come, and she will give us our benediction, and the ushers will lead us to exit the fellowship of the sanctuary, into the fellowship.